This conference will now be recorded. Welcome everybody. This is the uh, 7th of December, high risk, recurrent, advanced uh, prostate cancer video chat support group. Um, we are recording this. Uh, you can access the recording on YouTube or you can find it on our blog and you can even sign up to our blog and you'll get an automatic notice when it gets posted. Um, we do record because some people like to listen again later and because some people can't make the meeting. So typically we get anywhere from about 30 to 50 views of each session um, in addition to the guys that are here. Uh, if anyone is, uh, if either of the new gents are at all uncomfortable with us recording this, please let me know and we will make sure to um, make you incognito and we'll do that going forward. Um, so um, I think we have Bob McHugh who's new and uh, Jimmy Greenfield, have you ever been with us before? You, you're muted right now. So you would need to turn on your microphone, which is a little green or a red icon in your case that you that will become green when you unmute. Are you there? I just lost him. Did he leave? I think he left. Well, yeah, I think he did. Now oh, he's there. right That's back again. Oh. You scared him with the recording. And yes, Jim, there you go, Jim. Are you with us? Speak up, because your microphone's green, so we should be able to hear you. You know, uh, this is Jimmy Greenfield. We got you. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm sorry, I had trouble getting on. That's okay. And have you ever been with us before? I have not. Okay, well, welcome. And I'm going to start with Bob McHugh. And if you listen, you'll figure out the routine and then I'll come to you. Um, so uh, hang in for about 15, 20 minutes and we'll spend some time with Bob first. So no problem. Bob, Wonderful. I, Thank you. Sure. Um, Bob, what we do, I, what we do is we ask you to tell us a little bit about your diagnosis. Um, how old you are, where you are living, who's treating you, and what the issues are that you're facing. And then this um, fine group of peers that we have here will all put their heads together and try and help you resolve any problems you might have. So if you're ready, okay, we're ready. I'm, uh, I'm ready as I'll ever be. Okay. Cool. Um, cool. I'm 68 years old. I, um, I'm currently in Florida. I live in New Jersey most of the time, but uh, I'm in Florida now hiding from COVID. Uh, so far, so good. I believe this. Uh, I was um, diagnosed about six years ago. And um, the bottom line is that after uh, six years of various treatments, I am now trying to come to terms with the fact that my prostate cancer is unlikely to ever be cured, and so it will be part of the rest of my life. And I haven't quite figured out how to accept that yet. Mm. Mm. Well, um, there's a lot of guys on this call who are faced with the same issue. I've, I figured as much. And they will help you. And I just want to give a quick plug, even though it's very early in the conversation. <laughs> that we have, this group is pretty technical. So we will get into treatment and, and what you've done, but we have another group called Speaking Freely. And uh, that meets on the third Thursday of every month on this same, same room, how you got on. And in that group, we, we do our best to address um, the issues of how you live with a, with a chronic disease. We get into these issues around um, the, the, the non-treatment issues of, of having cancer. And I, maybe I'll ask Rusty to do a very quick promo on that because Rusty is one of the moderators. Rusty, you want to 
because some of these gents have never been with us and I wish they would because it's such a great meeting. But yeah, uh, it, it's a great meeting to come to. It, it's uh, as you'll see tonight, tonight's more of a technical uh, treatment discussion. The men speaking freely is really just about the side issues that come with uh, dealing with what you have to deal with. And, and you know, I guess the emotional side and just also fun. We just have fun as well, but uh, it's more of the, you know, what else we have to deal with other than um, just the cancer treatment. It's the psychological side of things and just, uh, you know, we, we just try to have fun and loosen up and talk about things that bother us. And so please, uh, please join us. Thanks. Thanks, Rusty. And by the way, the two new gents, um, if you haven't signed up to our database um, so that you get a reminder for this meeting, either send me or um, use the chat log. Oh, I need to do a quick explanation of the chat log. Um, sorry to interrupt you here, Bob, but uh, at the top on the right is a little speech bubble. It may be in a different place if you're on a Mac. If you open that window, um, and Bob McHugh is already on top of it because he already sent us a message, I'm impressed, um, but keep an eye on what goes on in the chat window because it will fill up over the period. And if you want to send a message to me um, or send it up to us to info at ancam.org, send us your email, we'll make sure that you get registered um, for the meetings. So, um, Bob, let's go back to you. You were diagnosed in 2014. The disease Correct. is back in 2020. Um, tell us a little bit about your original diagnosis and what you've done between 2014 and 2020 and what you're doing now. Okay. Well, when I was first diagnosed, um, like uh, the rest of you, I did my, did my due diligence and finally decided that I would have surgery with um, a fairly well-known Dr. Tawari in New York City. Yep. And um, I think he did an excellent job. I had the surgery. It's a long story. I had the surgery. They discovered that I had some heart issues working me up for the surgery. So that delayed my surgery. Dr. Tuari also suggested that I do six months of uh, ADT before the surgery. So it was actually a year later uh, in August of 2015 that I had my prostate gland removed. Surgery went well. Um, He's a great surgeon. I had very little in the way of, um, well, um, I certainly had and still have the erectile dysfunction, but in terms of the urinary incontinence, um, I've really been blessed. It hasn't, it hasn't been bad. Uh, however, six months later, my PSA went up microscopically and um, I'll use the, the, the technical terms because you guys probably know them better than me. Uh, they put me back on ADT. I had salvage radiation, 38 treatments. Um, that was good for about a year and a half. Uh, and then my PSA went up again and uh, again, microscopically, my, my PSA is, well, I don't remember the numbers off my hand off top, but as you know, it doesn't have to go up a lot for them to have concern. <clears throat> um, and so, uh, I think they recommended, uh, at, that, at this point, I had switched from Dr. Tuari to a guy named William O, O-H, in New York's Mount Sinai. And he's been my oncologist really ever since. He recommended um, another round of ADT. That was my third. <laughs> and, uh, and also uh, what they call stereotactic radiation. Five very specific and very powerful treatments. Uh, which I had a year and a half ago. I seemed to do well for a year and a half. And then in August, um, my PSA went went up just a little bit above undetectable. And uh, I'm currently waiting to have a second PSA test, which I'll probably do in the next couple days, and uh, take it from there. But Dr. O has suggested that um, if they haven't cured it by now, they're not going to was basically what he said and that and to use the word that you used earlier uh it's now going to be a chronic condition okay what was your what, hold, hold, hold on a minute peter please 
What was your original Gleason score? Eight. Four plus four? Uh, I think so. Okay. Um, it was, and I don't know if this is common or not, but um, the pathologist who examined my prostate gland after it was out of me revised it to a seven, four plus four. Four plus three. Four plus three, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, um, that's good information. And what was your original PSA? What was the highest it got to before you got treated? I think the highest PSA reading I ever had was eight. Okay, so again, two important pieces of information. And Peter, I promise I'll come to you, but I gotta, I, I gotta hand this one to Len first for obvious reasons. Um, okay. Hi, Bob. Uh, this is Len. And trying, to, trying to find you here, Len. There you are. Hello. Yeah. Got, got you. Thank you. Okay. So I am also um, a patient of Dr. O's and very happy with him. <clears throat> Good guy. Yeah, he is. And uh, I was also diagnosed the same year you were, uh, but uh, with a little more serious disease, I had a Gleason 9. Uh, was your <clears throat> original diagnosis confined to the prostate gland or was there uh, extra capsular extension or lymph node involvement, anything like that? I don't, I'll answer your question in just one second, Lynn. I just want to, I, I don't know how many of you know Ash Tawari, the surgeon. Um, he's very highly regarded in New York. He's the one who sent me to Dr. O. And when I first got to see him for my first consultation, I was like, I'm sure all of you, very worried, very nervous. And he said, Gleason 8, I have 100 Gleason 8, don't worry. So, I don't know whether, I'm not sure whether I believe him at this point, but, uh, um, but my, I'm sorry, Lynn, say, say it again. I was asking if your, uh, at your initial diagnosis, did they tell you, you the cancer was confined to your prostate gland or had it spread beyond that? Um, you know, they called my cancer aggressive, largely because of the relatively high Gleason, Gleason number. And it wasn't until um, Dr. Tawari had uh, spoken to me and I had had a, an MRI that uh, he basically said, um, your prostate cancer seems to be outside of the capsule, but just barely. And when he operated on me, he said, I got all the cancer I could find. Um, okay. but also to, and to answer your question, he, as you know, Tawari and some of these guys are pioneers in nerve sparing surgery. And he said to me early on, I'm not going to be able to spare your nerves, at least not on one side. So there was some minimal spread to answer your question. Okay, so you had, <clears throat> after your, your uh, initial uh, rise in PSA post prostatectomy, did they do any scanning to see where the lesions were? Um, not at that point, um, because I just had surgery uh, six months earlier. Tawari and Dr. O both agreed that um, radiation and uh, ADT, a second round of ADT, were automatically indicated. Right. Okay. So at what point did you have scans and what, what did it show? Okay, so after my first bout of radiation, um, I had undetectable PSA for about a year and a half. And Dr. O, but then my PSA went up again, microscopically, but, but above the undetectable level. And um, Dr. O suggested um, an Exumen scan which I had at Mount Sinai, and it showed a lesion in my prostate bed, no spread beyond that, 
Um, Len, I want to say it was about the size of a dime, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, and that's what they then treated with the stereotactic radiation. Okay. And so what, what hormone, what ADT drugs are you on now? None. I was on Zolodex all three times. I tolerated three, three different six month courses. Um, I was lucky. I tolerated it. I think as well as anybody does. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm due for a PSA test. I suspect that it will show my PSA has continued to rise. And I suspect that Dr. O will want to do a scan. And I think that probably after he does the scan, unless I get lucky, which, you know, so far I really haven't, but you never know. Uh, I will probably go back uh, for another round of, uh, of ADT. Okay, so you're on drug holiday at the moment. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I don't mean to, to play word games with you. Um, it was an assumption, a, a possibility that I would never need to go back on drugs because this was the third and final attempt to, I hate it when oncologists use the term cure because I don't think it's fair or accurate, but um, it's, um, that was, was the hope that this would, would rid me of cancer completely. So there was no, no prospect, at least at that point, of my going back on hormone therapy. Now there very much is. Okay, well, you're, you're in pretty good shape, I'd say, for the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think my biggest concern is uh, what the scan's gonna show. If in fact he wrecks, you know, uh, and, and he said to me in theory, when we spoke three months ago, uh, he, when I had, when I had the test three months ago that showed a rise, a, a minimal rise, um, from above, above undetectable, just a minimal rise above undetectable, but a rise nonetheless, he said, all right, well, I want you to just hang in there for another three months because with your PSA level, PSA level being what it is, even a, even a sensitive scan is probably not going to show us very much. Right. So that's three months ago. Right. Depending on my PSA, will he say, you know, let's wait another three months. Let's do another scan. Um, that remains to be seen. So uh, I will make a quick comment and then go to Peter, which is that um, if you've got a four in your number, then it's not right in in our view here at Ancan that the doctor ever talks about cure. The best you can ever expect is what's called a durable remission, which means it keeps on low, but it may come back. I've got to do a, I was supposed to get a PSA test today, but my doctor had to go get a COVID test, so she so she had to. Um, you know, I'm 15 years, I'm 13 years out of 14 years out, and I, I had stage three disease, and I, I never know, each year it's the same thing. So, we can't talk about cure, and I agree with you 100%, but we don't like doctors who talk about cure, because it's not uh, real. Uh, um, I'm very pleased to hear you say that. Yeah. Um, let's go to Peter, because I know Peter wanted to, Peter had some thoughts and wanted to get in. Go ahead, Peter. Which Peter? You. <laughs> Sorry. I should have been, I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, for, for most of us, the game is, is management and not cure. Um, like when I was diagnosed and I had surgery about the same time you did, I had the same, you know, I've got more aggressive disease. I knew from the get-go that it was not going to be cure, it was going to be management. <laughs> but in the six years, six and a half years, I've been dealing with this like you, the whole nature of prostate cancer uh, treatment has changed dramatically. Scans available now, there are drugs available now, there are all kinds of things that weren't there uh, when we were first diagnosed. We were both diagnosed in 2014. So right. that's, that's uh, I don't want to say light at the end of the tunnel, that's light in the tunnel. 
<laughs> yeah, well said. Right. So it's, it's, I'm much more optimistic. I mean, I've gone, I've gone through, like you, surgery, and then I made it almost a year for my IMRT, 39 days of radiation, and I made it uh, about a year and a half until I went to proton radiation. You, uh. you, instead of, I mean, I was offered the, uh, the SBRT, but I, I went to proton, and now I've just finished uh, chemotherapy this year. Uh, I'm not bummed out. I, um, I know that the game is management, and I know that there's a couple of treatments waiting in the wings if things come back. I monitor my PSA. I, I make sure I have the best doctor possible. It sounds like you do too, Dr. Rose. The lens observation sounds like he's a great doctor, and he'll follow you and keep an eye on you and won't let you get out of range there. Um, but the, it, um, I'm, I'm wondering if there, have, have you done genetic testing at all? Uh, is one question uh, to see if there's a genetic mutation component in, in your disease at all? Um, has Dr. O recommended that at all to you? We've never, I, I'm aware of it just because of the reading I've done uh, over the, these six years, but the answer is no, we have not discussed it. Okay, you might want to discuss that with him. And has he discussed second line uh, antiandrogens to you? Uh, drugs like Zytiga or, uh, or darolutamide and so forth. Probably you're not a candidate for it because your PSA is so low anyway. Um, but there, there are a lot of tricks in the bag that can keep this thing at bay for a long, long time. Um, well, well I, I will say when my cancer came back the second time, <laughs> Dr. O, uh, I said, the, you know, the inevitable after we had a long conversation, I said, you know, I know this is a question everybody asks you, doctor, but, you know, what's the prognosis? What, what does this mean for my future? How much time do I have? And he said, and this is a quote, decades. Yes. And I thought that was a little optimistic, particularly since I was about 67 at the time. I think I'm not sure I got decades anyway, but um, but yes, I, I hear what you I hear what you're saying about maintenance. I, I do. Yeah, I'm 73, and I feel like I've got decades ahead of me. I'm not giving up. Well, that's wonderful well, to know. I'm still on ADT. I walk three, four miles a day, keep active. And, um, you know, it hasn't destroyed me yet, and I know that there's there's more treatments still ahead of me. Bob, Bob, let me let me ask you. Um, do you have any cancer in your family anywhere? Yes, yes, very much so. Um, Believe it or not, my dad, who was also tangentially involved in Pearl Harbor, uh, died of colon cancer when he was 41 years old. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. And anything else? Yeah, my mom, who lived to be 90, developed colon cancer when she was about 87, had a tumor removed and never came back. Um, and I'm quite religious about colonoscopies. Okay, so let me ask: Have you have you mentioned that to to Dr. O or not? Have well, you thought, you we, we haven't. We haven't. I don't recall focusing on that in a conversation. Obviously, it's part of my record, and to what degree he's cognizant of it, and and that affects why. his advice. I don't know. Let, let me tell you why. Please. Because we do know that there is a connection between <clears throat> colon cancer and prostate cancer. Okay. At the time, your father, lost your dad, probably we didn't know. Um, Peter carries that inherited mutation. There's, a, there's several of them, maybe I think around six or seven altogether. There, there's three that are very common and together they're known as Lynch syndrome. L-Y-N. Lynch syndrome. It's okay. Okay. And I think Peter raises a really, really good issue that it would make a lot of sense for you to be tested for lit for um, inherited mutations um, because it does for a man to 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 lose your dad at such a long young age. It's possible that he was carrying a mutation. And do you, do you have kids? 
I have a 30 year old son, yes. Okay, so it's really important for him to know that Peter will vouch. And I don't, I don't want to take the time on this call to get into it because we've got a lot of guys on the call and we've got one more new man, but keep coming back here because we talk about this a lot. And um, this, this, this be, test, be, I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. The test we're talking about is it can be a spit test or a blood test. It's nothing more than that. But I definitely think that um, if I were you, I would definitely be looking to do a to to do that test. Well, let me just say close by saying two things. One, uh, I wouldn't have brought that up with my oncologist who I'll be speaking to, I think within the, before the end of the year. Now I absolutely will bring it up. And secondly, um, I can tell after 35 minutes that I need to be part of this group. We, 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 we'd love to have you. Where in Florida are you? Maybe you Len lives in Connecticut, but he's also down in Florida. Where are you? Uh, I am on, uh, I'm on the Gulf Coast. Hello. Hello. How was the date? R Rusty, you need Rusty. You need to mute. Like a uh, like. Someone mute Rusty, please. Date. <laughs> <laughs> so I, don't know if I have to do it. All right. Yeah, we're done. Okay. I'm on. I'm on the Gulf Coast, about in a town called Englewood, which is about forty miles south of Sarasota. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Len, how oh, Bob, you? you are close to where we live. We live just north of Tampa. Okay, but not as okay. close, not as close yeah. as the Len. Len, how far is that from you? Yeah, I'm in Venice, Bob, which, as you know, is the directly north of Englewood. Yeah, Len, I'm 15 minutes away from you. Probably. That's fantastic. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, you know, I'm in. I'm in Venice often. Yeah, but Len, Len, you're not in Florida, so. That's it. That's that, Bill. I'm in, Bob, I'm in St. Pete. Well, Len, come on down. It was 70 degrees here today. Ah, but it's yeah, 72. Why would I come down to you? And, and <laughs> Bob, Bob, get together with Len and talk to him about two kinds of genetic testing, so that you so you're up to speed on it before you talk to Dr. O. There are two kinds of genetic testing, and, and you should know the difference because they both might apply. And Len, how can I find out how to get in touch with you directly? The email uh, or whatever. I'll in the chat box. I'll send you my phone number. Oh, that'd be that'd be great. Okay, and and Len's email is very easy. It's Len at ancan.org. Len oh, nice. Ancan.org. All right, good. So you, you can find him there. And make sure you give us your email so we get you on. Is there anybody else on the line that wants to say anything quickly to Bob before we go on to um, to Jimmy? Okay. All right, Jimmy. I can see you put your hat on. Did. So we know where you are. It ain't Venice, Florida. <laughs> And um, you got the you got the uh, the preview, so we're going to put you up and we're going to put you in the hot seat right now. Thank you. Happy to be in the hot seat. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, yeah, I um, I'm impressed with all the guys that are not muted and not making any noise. Usually on calls where there's a lot of unmuted people, there's a lot of of noise, but. Uh, I guess you all know what you're doing, so that's really great. Yeah, um, oh, oh, Jimmy, that's because we have the king of the king of muters. One one of our guys is charged with making sure everybody's oh, excellent. quiet. <laughs> so he knows who to trust and who not to. I understand. <laughs> okay, let me get to it quick. There's so many of you. I saw you. I saw a YouTube video of your group a few times, and I decided I just had to. When I found out that I could get on here. You know, my first thought was, I can't get on with these guys. I don't know why I didn't think so, but um, I certainly think I qualify. So let me get to it quick. Um, in early 2019, I was uh, finally kind of nudged by my wife to say, well, all this getting up and going to bath bathroom at night, maybe there's more to it than just enlarged prostate, like you suppose there is. 
So I hadn't gotten any PSA tests before. I was just one of those guys that just, you know, I was good about my colonoscopies, but I never, uh, never did that. And uh, I got a PSA and it was 15.4. And my brother is actually a doctor in Annapolis. I live in Washington, D.C. He's referred quite a few people to Johns Hopkins, so I went there. I met with the urologist there. I got an MRI, I got a biopsy. So there was a lesion. Uh, my insurance didn't want to pay for the MRI. I got a biopsy, which I thought was pretty insane. And I paid for it out of my pocket because I wanted to know where the lesion was. And he suggested I do so. So then, as a Gleason 4 plus 3, um, a lot of saturation in the cores, all of it concentrated on one side, but there was extra capillary extension. And when I got my prostatectomy by Dr. Muhammad Alaf at uh, Johns Hopkins, I had a post-op of uh, seminal vesicle invasion, one lymph node out of 12 positive, and uh, stayed with the uh, 4 plus 3 Gleason with tertiary 5. So it was recommended to me, although I did have the good news of uh, negative margins and undetectable PSA after surgery, that I go and take a clinical trial also at Johns Hopkins with a Dr. Ken Pienta. So I signed up for that. And my biggest thing I'm curious about will, will reveal itself now that I say what I've been through there because he started me on a very aggressive, what seems to be a very aggressive uh, treatment, which was to get uh, Lupron right away, that is the September after the June surgery, so September of last year, um, concurrently three months of Zytiga, and um, also um, four cycles of uh, Taxotere chemotherapy, all in late 2019, which uh, was pretty much uh, pitched to me as a uh, kind of a, you know, uh, full full bore sort of thing, you know, which which is uh, just something that they like to try because he was pretty upfront with me that you know as we said, cure seems to be uh, not the name of the game when when the uh, horse has left the barn or whatever you want to call it. So even though I had some good news, I didn't mind going through that. And then in January, I had 37 rounds of of uh, of uh, uh, IMRT. And then I continued on the Lupron, and that's where it gets interesting because um, when it came to about um, a couple of months ago, I had a follow-up with the radiation oncologist, and I he asked me how I was doing, and and I I wanted to be succinct, so I sent him a little letter. I said, just read this, you know, it's probably prompted because we do a telemed. I said, you know, saves time, and it was just describing that. You know, I've not been miserable on ADT. Uh, certainly, I can feel it. I feel tired sometimes. Um, I, I work out really, really hard uh, you know, to no effect. And uh, I, I do have some warm moments. I wouldn't call it hot flashes. I think I have tolerated it well. And I do credit a couple of things for that. But anyway, very lucky there. But I told him, I said, you know, this is, I, I don't have any sexual function. I wouldn't even know if I did because I have zero desire from the Lupron. I've, I've, I've explored it a little bit, but it's hard for me to want to do any penile rehab because it's about as interesting to me as cleaning the bathroom. And my wife is very loving and understanding, and as far as she's concerned, I can just wait. Because the other piece is that my incontinence has not improved uh, to any large degree. So I was sold on that there was about a 5% chance that I would be incontinent after a year, and I hit the 5% jackpot on that. And still, even uh, several months after a year, I still have a, a fair amount of it, despite Kegels and despite my best efforts. So that's a real pain in the, uh, in the you know what. And um, so I'm first thing that happened is I, I, I just slayed this out to the uh, radiation oncologist, and I was slated to go be on Lupron for two years. And he just says to me, and this is at a year and a month, uh, he says, well, I don't think you have to be on it anymore. And I said, Really? Uh, okay. Well, no. Was somebody going to tell me that? He goes, I don't know. I said, Well, I sh I'll talk to my oncologist who's running the trial at Hopkins. He says, Please do. He said, I'll put it in my notes too. So I talked to my oncologist and I said, What about this getting off the of loop right now? He says, I think it's a good idea. And I, you know, I didn't push it, but my thought was, if I hadn't said anything, would I just be on it for two years and that's it? So instead, I said, Thank you very much, and you know, we'll see what happens. And then. I met with a urologist, uh, also at Hopkins, who was referring me to someone to help me with the uh, incontinence, and he's given me a referral. I'm going to meet with the guy in a couple of weeks. 
in the meantime, I've gotten some imipramine and some things to help with, because ironically, I have nighttime frequency, even though I don't leak at night at all. So I have to get up and go a lot at night. Uh, it's every, you know, it was every 90 minutes for a while. Now it's pretty much every two to three hours, which I think is, you know, pretty standard. Um, at least it's been for me, but, um, he gave me this referral for that. And then when he, he, he asked me, the urologist did, how's your sexual function? I said the same thing to me that I told you guys. I said, I have no idea. I don't care. I mean, I want to care, but you know, it's hard. And he said, well, um, you're, you, they've let you off the loop run, right? And I said, yeah. And he says, well, I think she get better. But I'm going to offer you, if it, with the blessing of your oncologist, some HCG. I didn't even know what that was. And he said, this is to help your pituitary to start the process of the testosterone returning. And naturally, I said, well, that sounds good. But if there's remnants of cancer, will they come back sooner as well? And he says, maybe. <laughs> so I really knew that I was dealing with uh, the, you know, the uncertainties that, are, that these, these doctors have been pretty much up front. I asked my oncologist about scans. I said, well, will I be eligible for scans at some point if I need them? He says, maybe, perhaps. So I don't feel like I've gotten bad medicine. I don't feel like I've gotten bad treatment. But I do feel a little bit funny about, A, being just told, even though I, you know, I didn't really complain bitterly, that I should just go ahead and take off of the, you know, a year off the Lupron. And then also that I would be offered this HCG. And if I hadn't said anything about, uh, if I hadn't talked to the urologist about a separate matter, I wouldn't have been offered that either. So it's an odd thing, you know. So I mean, it's 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 I'm, I'm ambivalent because I, I I like the fact that I'm getting off it. I like the fact that I'm getting to this HCG, which supposedly will shorten to three to six months, what might have been nine to twelve for testosterone to return. My testosterone was 700 before I started all this, and. Uh, when I got, I got to tell you one thing. When I, when I found out at the beginning of treatment, my testosterone at age 63 was 700. I looked back at my youth and I thought, no wonder I got into so much trouble. Man, this explains a lot because I don't know how high it must have been when I was 20, 30 years old. But never mind that. That's my situation. And um, so, I have uh, been interested in, you know, hearing others' experiences and looked at some of the forums online and stuff. And now I'm here. And uh, having looked at you guys a couple of times on YouTube, um, I, I was uh, intrigued and thought, why not just try to get on myself? Is that enough? Well, it's great. And you're very, very welcome. And there's a lot of issues that you're raising. Um, there's a couple of thoughts and comments I want to make, and then I'll throw it out. Um, the first thing is, like, you know, we only talk from our own experience here. and um, I am a firm, firm believer that when you're on that first course of testosterone, of uh, LHRH, you have to stay the course. Because everybody that I've seen that has not stayed the course um, seems to have had significant issues. When they got off it too early, it didn't work. When they stayed the course, they seem to have done much better. Now, staying the course for me means... I did 28 months, but I think 18 months is the minimum for me. And um, I was just talking to a guy um, that lives close to Peter on Maui this week, and um, he did his two years plus, and he's doing very well at this point in time. And he had stage three disease with SVI and goodness knows what else. And I just feel like you have to stay the course. That said, um, I'm impressed with Ken Pienter. I've heard him speak once. He has a great reputation. Um, and um, I've spoken to him personally at that conference. I like him. So, you know, you could say, well, if he thinks you should come up after 13 months, that's fine. But I know if it was me, I would not. Um, I, I would stay that 18 month course um, at least the first time around. And there are guys on this call who have stuck out the 18 months before thinking about coming off, doing intermittent or, or whatever else. The other thought that I had um, from experience with other people, um, when you see this guy about the incontinence, you might want to ask him about the electrostimulation. 
So there is an electrostimulation that was developed at um, UCSF by the vice chair of the urology group. And I always forget his name. Um, I'll look it up and I'll put it in the chat window to you in a moment, or I'll send it to you afterwards. And um, there is electrostimulation that I know has been very helpful to some guys who have had long-term incontinence. And so, um, and the points are like on the foot, um, but, you know, it sounds like voodoo medicine, but but there are some very, very reputable practitioners who are doing it. So with that said, um, I'm going to throw out uh, for HCG, for testosterone issues, anything else. Um, anybody wanted to talk to Jimmy? Uh, Jim, this is Len. How, how long have you been off of ADT, or did you just stop recently? My last three-month shot was in September, so I would have been due for one pretty much uh, this week. Okay, so it's a little too early to see if your T levels are rising. Uh, it's definitely too early, I would think, for that, but... Yeah. Uh, because I was just thinking, instead of using HCG, which we don't hear too often as a, you know a way to bring back your testosterone quickly, why not just uh, as long as you're on drug holiday, why not just let your testosterone recover normally? Well, you, you know, you you uh, you raise a question that reminds me very much. I'm sorry, M Mr. Moderator, what is your name? Len, L-E-N. Um, uh, on my screen, I'm up in the left. Can corner. You're Len, you're Len, but I, I'm talking the master of ceremonies. I'm sorry. Oh, Rick. Rick? Yeah. Okay. You, you know, Len, you and Rick both raise a kind of a similar question to me where you say, why not just maybe let your testosterone recover normally? And and uh, Rick says, well, uh, I would, you know, I would go the course on the ADT. I hope you understand that. You know, I, I'm just uh, I'm putting my faith in doctors. I ask them what they you know what they think I should do, and they tell me this. And it I feel kind of funny saying, for instance, to my oncologist, well, I understand that you let me off early, but I think I'd rather stay on it anyway. And you know, in the same in the same way, to say thank you very much for the ACG CG, but I think I'll just let it uh, recover normally. Especially since I ran the HCG thing past Ken Pienta, also as I said, and he said yes, I you know. I'm 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 good with this plan, so I kind of feel like you know I'm I'm uh, even though I understand what you're saying and I kind of you know uh, I, I don't know whether to agree or disagree. I have not. I want to emphasize. I did not say to either Ken Pienta, "Hey, I want out of here on the Lupron," or did I say to the urologist, "Hey, you got anything to get me moving along here?" I didn't even hint at either one of those sentiments. Am I clear? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that's what's a little bit funny for me, you know. Because I didn't so complain, actually, I complained. It been one thing. I think Peter, you're wearing the T-shirt, aren't you? Yeah. Peter Kafka. I think yeah. you need to show Jimmy the T-shirt. I've, I've got the old one. It doesn't say "Be your own best advocate." <laughs> okay, well that's our motto here, Jimmy. Is What's the motto? Be your again? own best advocate. Be your own best advocate. It's not simply the doc just says this is what we want to do, and you know, and you just say uh huh. You have to think about it from your point of view and respond. It's now, very I actually yeah. agree with Rick. I don't, To me, the upside of extending ADT versus the downside of not, I don't see the balance. Right? If you're not having hot flashes and you're not having serious issues, with ADT, I wonder why you want, why they want to stop it. So do I. <laughs> um, I can only surmise that they think that I, I, my description to the radiologist was a bit dire, but I wanted to be clear, and I did include in my comments that, you know, I'm tolerating it well, and I'm perfectly willing to go the course if, if that's what your recommendation is. 
So again, that's why I'm sort of a little confused because you know it's not the same. You know, advocating for myself in the direction of saying, "Hey, if it's the other way," I'd say, "Well, I know you guys want me on two years, but I don't like this, so I'm going to leave." And I know you you know, let me test testosterone come back naturally, but I don't like that either, so I'm going to take some something for it. Instead, it's the opposite. They're recommending, you know, the early uh, uh, exit and the HCG. And I'm the one who's going to have to advocate for myself and say that I think I need to be more uh, serious or whatever you call it. It's just guess, interesting. Uh, that's the all. question I had, Jimmy, is what provoked them to say they need to get your testosterone up fast? What What is the issue that made them think that natural return would not be in order? I have no idea. All I did, I didn't even say to the urologist anything like, well, they took me off the Lupron. Can't wait till I'm back in the saddle. You know, I didn't say anything of that nature. All I said was they, they let me off and, you know, I look forward to it and we'll see what happens. I was very neutral about the whole thing. And he, on his own volition, recommended DHCG. So this is, uh, you know, it's confusing. So, by the way, just in case it doesn't come up, I'm in Chevy Chase. Oh, okay. What's your name? Herb Geller. I am i don't know where on your screen I reside. I but... see you in the lower left-hand corner. Herb Geller. I know you. You look like someone I know, so it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all. I don't want to take any more time. I know you have a lot to talk about, and I, you know, I gave you the overview that I could. I can't imagine there's anything I didn't cover, and it was very interesting to hear what you have to say. And now I got to go talk to Ken Pienta and say that there's, I, there's something I got to talk to you about because it's not sitting right with me anymore. You know, I, I, thanks I, for I, nothing, uh, Rick. That's right. I mean, I think you do, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I mean, the doctors are not on a pedestal, and I right. think you're going to raise some interesting issues with. And you can say, you know, I've sat with other guys. A lot of guys sort of feel maybe I should do at least this much. What, what's your opinion? If he says, look, it doesn't matter. The problem is there's been no tests. What we have seen in other situations um, where adjuvant hormone therapy is given early on in the disease, we've seen plenty of tests there, but not in this recurrent situation that you're looking at right now. So we don't really know. That, that, that's that's the, the, um, the bottom line. That said, we can only speak anecdotally, and we've shared that with you. I wanted to just say to you, um, some guys have put some good stuff in the chat window for you. Okay. Um, I have just put something in the chat window. I sent it to Peter by mistake, Dan. Uh, I will send it to you uh, momentarily, which is um, this uh, a website for, um, called, for Europlasty. And uroplasty is this procedure that I that I just mentioned. Okay. Um, and I'll I will put it in there uh, in in one second. Um, and the the um, doctor at UCSF, his name still escapes me, but uh, I'll find it and I will put it in the chat window before the end of the meeting. Um, and 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 you can. You can look for it for it there. This Europlasty site, by the way, I sent it to Peter again. Sorry, that's why I'm. I need I need to concentrate on one thing at a time. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Jimmy, we got your email. Come back. Is is there any? Let me just check. Is there anybody else who would like to say anything to to um, to Jimmy before we any 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 Anybody want to say anything on incontinence, on the ED, on this, this return of uh, testosterone, HCG? Okay. Anything anybody wants to say? I'd just I'm like to say... I'm a little surprised at his experience at Hopkins. Yeah, hold on, Peter, hold on a second. Jim Barnes was in first. Go ahead, Jim oh, Barnes. Oh, I was just going to say, Jimmy, that uh, you know my interacting in this group, listening to these guys, telling them my situation, really changed my course of uh, treatment and got me more assertive with my doctor, more engaged. I went to those meetings uh, with my doctor, so much more knowledgeable. It's been so beneficial that 
you know, got a lot out of it. It changed, really changed uh, the course of my treatment. Great to know. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a little, this is Peter, I'm a little surprised at your experience at, at Hopkins. It sounds like you're getting a shuffle a little bit, even though you've got good doctors. Um, and you said you've got a, a relative who's a, who's a doctor there? Uh, he's um, a doctor in Annapolis. He just, he uh, just retired, uh, my older brother. Because a lot of people on here have had great experience, at, and there are wonderful doctors at Hopkins. Um, and it just surprises me that you, you kind of get a, a little bit of a feeling of getting the runaround on some of this and not getting enough attention and, uh, and clear answers. Well, I can tell you that uh, I can tell you that most definitely one of the reasons I lean toward doing pretty much what they told me is because uh, all you hear about is you know it's center of excellence, you know second to none, and all that. So, I you know I, I got as educated as I could. I mean, I kind of know what's going on, but I am surprised and have to really stop and think about what you all said, especially Rick and uh, and Ken, because I I don't. I, I, I didn't expect that, you know, I, I expected maybe you'd say, well, if that's what they say, let's see what happens. But I understand it's very risky. So well, I appreciate it. I want it. to follow up on the one thing that Peter just said. And, it, you know, what it sounds like is that there are a lot of cooks involved at Hopkins for you. And, you know, who is the main man that everybody talks to? Do you have one person? That's it's Ken, Ken Pianta. Yeah, Pianta. I do have one, yeah. And so, you know, that prop to me, you, you, you know, because you said, well, the urologist said this and the medical oncologist said that, that's a little bit troublesome. Yes, but I did relay that all that information to him. So he knows all of that. So at least there's that. But thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Jimmy, I'm still looking for that guy's name. I don't find it, and I've got to get back to work here, so I'll email it to you later. I've got to Having work. sent it to the wrong guy twice, you'll remember this time, I'm confident. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Um, so I need the vice chair, UCSF. That'll remind me. I always forget this guy's name. He's a good guy. He's been there forever. Um, okay. Um, now we've got somebody on the telephone. Who is that? David. Speak up again. David Muslin. Ah, Mr. Muslin. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. Running a little late today, but I'm here. God bless you. And we have another gent, um, Lou, who, uh, your Muted right now, Mr. Lou. Would you like to unmute? There's a little green, a little red microphone that you've got to click on one time. We'll keep an eye out for you and we will come to you momentarily, but uh, we really need to get around our guys right now. Um, so I'm going to see who needs time. We've got just about an hour. Fortunately, we don't have to close the room, right? Uh, although next week we will, because we've got a group following us, because we're on that screwy for Tuesday because of the, this month. So I'm going to go Rick, down. Rick, you need to get to Rusty. He's got to leave soon. Oh, Rusty, yes. All right, before we even start, thank you very much. Rusty, talk to us. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm having a mammogram and sonogram on Friday for what they think is potential breast cancer. Uh, on top of that, I was uh, diagnosed with lupus, uh, what, two weeks ago. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure if anything's related, um, but I do have cyst behind both my nipples, and I'm not sure you know, if that's common uh, or not, but uh, maybe I'm hoping it's the testosterone that's coming up. And, you know, that, you know, when I was, uh, you know, going through puberty, same thing happened, but uh, this feels different. And now the bones below the breast hurt. So it's it's been a tough day. Oh, Rusty, I, I still think 
that it's going to be what you experienced and your boys experienced through puberty. I'm putting my money on that, man. I hope so. I so. hope so. I, I really hope so, too. Um, has anybody else experienced this issue when their testosterone has returned that they've gotten any lumps and bumps on their chest? Rusty, you're not on monotherapy with the hormone blocker, are you? No, I'm off everything right now, Lynn. Okay. Could this be related to lupus? I don't know. Um, I can't get in to see the rheumatologist till January. So uh, kind of uh, in a weird place right now. You know, I mean, that, that, that's also another issue that, I mean, is the lupus diagnosis definitive, Rusty? Uh, I've got the, the lupus diagnosis was from a sports medicine that used to be my PCP. So, you know, he's a good doctor, but he switched over to sports medicine. And when my uh, hand started giving me an issue, uh, I went to him. And that's where they did the uh sonogram of the hands and also did the blood test and that's where it came up with positive for lupus uh, and when you say positive for lupus based on how they read the sonogram or based on what based on the uh well, both the sonogram but more of the uh blood tests that they did and there's some enzyme apparently that uh so rusty did, did they find anti-nuclear antibodies? Did that's what they did. They look for that. What's that? I'm sorry. Anti SLE normally it's an autoimmune disease, and yes. it will often have anti-nuclear anti antibodies directed against your cell nuclei yes. as a diagnostic criteria. I think that's why it's I need to go to the nipples. He said it. A different doctor because the sports medicine, I think. This is beyond his ability, and um, you know, I, I need to go to another doctor. Yep. Rusty, so, this, this is Jake. Um, you just finished a bunch of radiation. I'm just wondering if maybe your your nipple sensations might be gynecomastia. I have no idea. I mean, I, I went through 39 rounds of radiation, um, and I ended in July. So. I would have thought that if I would have any type of cyst or growth in my breasts, it would have been during ADT and radiation, not six months after. Yeah, well, I would think so too, but it, it may be worth checking into rather than yeah. jumping to the conclusion that you have breast cancer. Yeah, um, but Jake, gynecomastia isn't going to come from radiation. If anything, the radiation is what they use to stop the gynecomastia. Well, that's true too. Um, but it but you know, there could be gynecomastia. You were on bicalutamide, were you not, Rusty? I was on Lupron and um, um, Casadex. Yep, Casadex, yeah, whatever. Which is the same as bicalutamide. And sometimes there are issues with the bicalutamide causing gynecomastia, but you really don't have gynecomastia, you've got these lumps and bumps. So, I mean, you're doing the smartest thing uh, the problem is you get scanxiety because you don't know what's going on until you've had the scan and then you, you you work up all these things in your mind and of course Rusty never works stuff up in his mind, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we, we know our customers here, right? So the thing is that um, I can only say to you, look, we, we all we all want to support you here the best we can. The one thing I can offer you, which I've done, and I know you've connected with some of the male breast cancer guys, and I do have some, some good lupus people because we're trying to get a lupus group started. We don't have, we're not up and running yet, but I've definitely got some really good lupus advocates that we're in touch with. And all you got to do is give me the high sign and I'll connect you to the lupus advocates. Um, you want me to do that? Definitely. You're ready? Okay. I'll, I'll, 
I'll connect you. Um, I've got two in mind. Um, a, a lady in Jersey and a really, really smart woman down in South Carolina. And That's I nice. will, um, I'll con con I'm writing it down here. Connect Rusty to Lupus Advocates. I'll take care of it tomorrow, Rusty. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's funny, lupus is a mainly female issue. So I yeah. was just wondering if it is somehow related to the uh, ADT, um, you know, ba basically being turned into a female. Yeah. But 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 Rusty, it's not only because one of the issues we've had is we've been trying to find a male lupus moderator because we wanted that in the team, and there there is at least one guy I don't know him, but Danielle Turco, who's one of the people I'm going to connect you to, she does know him, and the other lady is called Helena Johnson, and maybe uh, I'm, and we'll maybe, I'm, maybe I'm volunteering. Okay, <laughs> we hope not. We, no, we, it's, we, uh, uh, it's pretty much. Does anyone perfect. else on here have any experience with lupus? Okay. All right. You're dismissed. Thank you. Good luck, Rusty. Good luck, yeah, man. Good luck. I'll be in touch yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. I got Keep tomorrow. us in the loop, Rusty. Good luck, Rusty. Take care, guys. Um, See you next week. Okay. I'm going to go down the list. See who needs time. We've got 50 minutes. Um, we'll get around as much people as we as we can, and then I'll check in at the hour mark and see who um, has anything that's real urgent, and we'll get to you as well. I, I don't have to go anywhere after this. And if I start gnawing at my fingers, you'll know it's just because I'm hungry. Um, OK, Jake, anything for you? Um. Just a very brief update on a PSA test, on a PSA right. test. And guys, just give me a yes or a no. You don't have to explain what it is. That'll make us go quicker. If you need time, it's fine. I don't need to know how long, just a yes or a no. Peter, yes. anything for you? No. Thank you. Uh, Peter Monaco, anything for you? No, Rick. Um, Frank Fabish, anything for you today? No, Rick. Thank you. Uh, Dell, anything you'd like to talk about? Yes. My mic okay, won't Okay, got around. you. Got you. You're, and you're coming in pretty faint, Del. Um, uh, Regina and, and Russ, anything that you guys would like to speak about today? No. Not me. Okay. Len, anything for you? No, sir. Okay, Ben, anything you'd like to talk about today? I think tonight, thanks. Okay. Herb, anything for you? No, no thanks. Herb, uh, when, 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 when are you going to make a decision, man? We've got to get on your case. I made the decision. I mean, I will talk about, I didn't want to bring that. I mean, I've made, I'm going for SBRT at, 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 uh, um, at Georgetown. Oh. Okay, well, we'll stop by you very quickly because I can't put notes in my computer whilst I'm writing here. Okay, John, <laughs> anything for you? No. Okay, let shelter up. Anything for you? Yes, if there's a uh, time. Okay, Alan, anything for you? Where are you, Alan? Which are you? I'm fine, thanks. You good? I'm good. Okay. Ken Anderson, anything for you? No, thanks, Rick. Okay. Uh, Dennis C., anything for you? No, thanks, Rick. Okay. Um, Al, anything you'd like to talk about today? Uh, you mean uh, Alton? Yes, Al Latimer. Yes, uh, yes. Okay, got you. Um, Carl, anything for you today? You seem to keep leaving me towards the end of the uh, discussion here, Rick. I don't like that. But yes, I do want some time. Okay, I've got to tell you something. I've still got 10 more guys to go through. Um, Sylvester, anything for you? 
No, thank you. Okay. Um, Dennis N., anything for you, sir? Uh, no, thanks, Rick. Okay. Are you doing okay there? Yeah. Okay. Doing uh, fine. Good, good. Tracy, anything for you? Nope, I'm all set. Okay, Bill Franklin, Bill F., anything for you? Nope, I'm good, thanks. Okay, Larry, I didn't forget you. Anything oh for you? Oh, my God. Oh, surprises, surprises. I'm good, Rick, thank you. Okay, uh, Jim J., anything for you? No, I'm good tonight, thank you. Okay, um, well, I didn't call Jim Barnes. Jim, Jim B., anything for you? No. Okay. Um, David, anything for you? Yes. Okay, got you. Um, Lou Hu, are you there yet? You can't hear you. I don't know why, but I'm afraid we cannot hear you. Your, your microphone is not... Um, it's showing it's on, but we don't hear anything. So um, you may want to call in. That would work. Did, did, did somebody did somebody catch something there? I'm so sorry that we can't get you, but we, I think you're probably new, and so we'd encourage you to try and come in next week anyway, because we we just we can't handle another new person this week. Um, but please, please come back. Uh, Paul, anything for you? No, I'm fine, thanks. Okay, and the gents who are sort of auditing, I, I do want to check in with you in case something you've heard. Um, Jim, trade anything for you? No, well, I don't have anything tonight, Rick, thank okay. you. Thank yes. And um, and Alan P, anything you'd like to 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 bring up? No, I'm fine, thanks. Okay, so we should be able to get around everybody. Dale um, Jensen joined Rick. Did you touch yeah, space with him? No, I we already got. I already got Dale. Okay. Um, he was here before, and his his microphone is kind of. Yeah, I, I know. I know what he did. Um, did I miss anybody? Did I overlook anybody as I am wont to do? Maybe me. I'm not sure, but I don't need any time, Alan Moskowitz. Oh, no, I called you. Definitely. Oh, maybe I mixed up with several other Allens here. Okay. All right. Not a problem. Well, I, but I, I, I couldn't overlook. I couldn't overlook a New Jersey right? How can I do that? Can't, can't do that. I cannot do that. Um, all right. Lou is on. Lou's photo is on. I don't know if his mic is on or not or not right now or not. Um. Ah. Oh, yes. Can we hear you, Lou? Speak to us. Your mic. Your mic isn't working. Or your volume might be turned down. The volume on your computer might be turned down. <clears throat> No, the volume's only for listening, not for talking. We can see you, we just can't hear you, and, and the microphone shows us being connected. Um, we'll work with you next time. Come on back, because I know you haven't been with us before, and we, we have to get through the guys. If we have time at the end, we'll come back to you, we'll try and help you get your microphone going and everything else or but, you can call in with a telephone yeah or you can call in on the telephone but that said um for new people it's it's pretty important they get here on time um the, the tuesday meeting will start at six o'clock eastern um because once we get into it it's kind of hard to make room for for new guys um because we take try to try to figure you all out at the beginning. Jake, speak to us, Mr. Hannum. Okay. Um, well, after 18, 17 weekly chemo sessions, I had a PSA test last week, and it went down a whole one half 
of a point. Went from 85.3 to 84.8. Um, so kind of, I'm very unimpressed. I'm a little bit disappointed, but uh, I realize that it's probably, it could be just an anomaly um, that it's happened in the past and hopefully it'll happen again, that it'll, it will go down more the next time. That's all. Ken Anderson, do you do you want do you want to comment on 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 that for Jake? You know, Rick, Jake and I talked earlier today, and I told him take the win. So, yeah, I mean, it didn't go up. Take the win. Be happy. Yeah, and that's the way I'm taking it. I'm I'm not I'm not worrying about it too much. Um, and thanks for talking to me for so long today, Ken. I appreciate that. No, you called me back. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ken, for for connecting with um, with Jake today. It really, really appreciate that. Um, we all do. Um, anybody else have, especially any of you who have done chemo, do you have any words of wisdom for Jake? Jake's done um, the equivalent of about six regular sessions so far in terms of chemo. Um, but he's doing it on a weekly basis. So 18, um, normally you get it every three weeks. It translates into about six full sessions. Um, anybody, any chemo guys have anything to say to Jake? Jake, I, this is Peter. I, 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 I have no way of saying, telling this, but I, I suspect that chemo did not bring my uh, PSA down uh, because I was taking uh, ADT and dalalutamide uh, in conjunction with my chemo. And I, th I think that's what brought my, my uh, PSA down. I don't think the chemo really had much effect on my PSA. That's, that's just my take on it. I mean, I, I saw the, the dalalutamide and, and uh, an ADT immediately work on my on my uh, PSA, and then it continued to work while I was on chemo. <laughs> so that's that's what my guess. But I know that you've got some other issues with with uh, second line drugs and and so forth. So that's uh, I, I don't know how where I can go with that. Yeah, well, I've been on ADT all along. I still get Lupron every four months, Peter. Um, I'm not taking any second line right now, though. You're right. Um, cause most of them have more or less run their course, um, right. with the exception of darolutamide. I haven't been able to try that one. So. Well, Peter, I can say if, if chemo, I can only imagine chemo. I mean, there's no reason to do chemo and go through all the side effects if it doesn't do anything to the cancer cell. So your doctor. I cannot imagine he would allow you to continue doing chemo if he didn't think it was doing something. So, Jake, yeah, take the win. I mean, I just finished round 10, and um, I, you know, I, I, it better sure as I'll be doing something. So, I hope you're wrong, Peter. I really hope you're wrong. Well, I think it takes, I think chemo takes a while to work its magic. I don't think it, happens overnight so that's that's my take on it anyway I, I don't know well i've been on it since now since july right and it, it did bring it down i started out i had a 186 psa so it's now down to 85 or 84.8 so it did bring it down 100 points in what six yeah. months five months so it is it is so, doing something um you know, I, it's certainly i think you're right jake it's doing something and if if it weren't doing anything, things would go the other direction. So right now, go with it. Jake, what's the plan for how long you continue the treatment? Just basically as long as you're seeing results? Is 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 that it? Yeah, pretty much. We haven't discussed the next step beyond that. But yeah, that's pretty much what she said. And I said, I asked her, how long will I be on that? And she says, till it stops working. So, and I guess as long as the PSA is going down or staying the same, it's it's working. Well, I think the other thing that would come into play, Rick, would be, you know, 
your white blood cell count. If you have to get a blood transfusion or your, your blood goes wacky, then you'll probably stop taking it. Right. Uh, that's a trigger mechanism for me, I know. Well, yeah. so far I've been lucky. My, my, uh, my, my blood counts are low. Um, you know, their lab core tags them as low, but they're only like a point less than normal. So, and she's yeah. not concerned about them. Well, that's like mine. So I don't think that'll be, uh, that's mine as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think you and I can are kind of very similar. We're, we're kind of almost running parallel. Well, I'm going to be checking out that Amgen 160 trial. I sent it to you. You should look at it. I did. I did. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I, I posted it on Facebook, in fact. Good. Yeah. And, and um, you know, we maybe we should just quickly mention the Amgen 160 trial. Um, it's Amgen 160 is a bite drug um, by specific um by specific uh, i forget what does bite stand for Herbal. By specific by specific t -cell engager. T -cell you got it lynn by, by specific t cell engager thank you by, and what what it is um it, it's a molecule that um grabs a t cell on the one hand and the cancer cell on the other hand and introduces the T cell into the cancer cell. And that's the concept. And there are at least four or five of these different bite drugs out there, if not more. And um, just this past week or so, Alicia Morgan's interviewed um, Neil Shore, um, Oliver Sartor, and Ben Tran, who we know because, and Ken knows well, because he supports, he's the doc for one of our guys in Australia. And he has reported some outstanding results from their phase one, phase two level. It's a small trial, not a lot of people, but we're aware of it because Drake has been, Charles Drake has been talking about it for quite some time. Um, and some of our other docs have been talking about it for quite some time. And one of our um, one of our guys, um, uh, a former colleague of of, of Jim's at uh, us, Jim Schrade at us too, has very very seriously been looking at it. But he's doing chemo right now and getting some results. Um, I wrote to Dr. Morgan's yesterday and asked if they could arrange for a um, webinar or webcast to discuss all the different bites that are currently in trial and what the difference is between them. Because AMG, for example, Amgen has 160 and then they have another one called 509. And then Bencore is making a drug. Regeneron is making one REGN5678. Um, and there's a couple more beyond that. So, you know, a bit like we talk about um, the PSMA technology, the bike technology is somewhat similar, but side by side, um, where the concept is being repeated in lots of different versions, just like the PSMA agent is being repeated in lots of versions. And, um, and we don't we don't have a bite drug yet approved by the FDA. Um, I'm I'm not even sure if it's approved in Australia yet. I think this is the trial to get it approved in Australia. So let let me let me just give Herb and Len a quick opportunity to comment on bite. Well, I think that they are extremely promising. Uh, the one thing that I really you know after listening to the to the bite. Uh, presentations at the PCF meeting. The one thing that really struck me was that we that I wonder if we need you know our, the bite gets the immune cell close to the tumor, and that's really supposed to be the purpose because of the antibody. But yet we're still not. What I really do worry about there's still the checkpoint going on, 
And I, you know, but I haven't, I'm wondering if we're going to have a trial where we combine a bite with a checkpoint engine. Mm. Because I want, that struck me that, boy, you know, if you, unless you do both, you may not get there. And I don't think well, they've Herb, done both yet. Herb, there's I've one listed, on. there's one listed on, um, clinicaltrials.gov with PEM. Uh huh. So you're right. There's one in the works. And I think that's a, to me, that's also a, maybe even a more promising strategy. Yeah. But I think that, between. you know, both bites and tumor directed toxins are, are really exciting to me. Len, what, any? Uh, Herb, I agree 100%. I think the, a lot of the immuno approaches uh, work for a while, but uh, then you know the feedback mechanisms uh, shut it down, and it needs um, a boost with the uh, checkpoint inhibitors to keep the immune reaction going. It seems they're they're finding this to be true. Um. Ken, I cannot find where I saved that uh, link. Would you be good enough to just put the link to the Alicia Morgan's webcast in the chat window? I know I have it here, but I, 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 I can't be digging around during the meeting. Can you find yeah, it? I, I can do it. I sent it to Jake. Jake, do you have it easy? Yeah, I'll, I'll take care of it, Ken. Don't worry about it. Thanks. Right. Thank you, Jake. Yeah, so just listen to this. I mean, the, 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 the response was something, um, something, it was well over 50%. And this was in men who had already had chemo. Um, yeah. So it was a pretty advanced, um, it was, a, they were pretty advanced and, and it does look very, very promising. So we'll, we'll keep moving along, but, um, but this is some good news from, from the last week. Um, okay, uh, Dell, can we hear you now? I hope we can. We can. Okay. So, uh, I was doing my last week, last Monday. We just lost, we just lost you. It must be something uh, with the position of your microphone. No, my microphone is working. Is that working any better? Yes, maybe that's what it is, your wave band. Maybe, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so speaking of Alicia Morgans, I was just there on Monday, uh, the 30th. And so I was there for to my uh, follow-up after completing radiation. Um, and so we discussed where to go from here. And so uh, this month I'm hitting 18 months on ADT. And she liked that my numbers have been zero since surgery. And again, the radiation was a follow up to uh, some unclear margins. And so she says, let's go ahead and fly off the ADT and just see where we're at. Uh, Cause uh, like she said, we could be out for another year or two, three, who knows long, but not, and, and the PSA could stay zero, or we could cycle off and um, see if the PSA rises as the T rises. And I'm a chemist, I'm a scientist, I'm always up for an experiment to see uh, what might be the case. Um, and I, I'm, I haven't seen my, my experiences on T have been horrible, but they haven't been the best. Uh, mo mostly fatigue and 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 um, uh, the really restless sleep. Sleep. I get, I've had horrible sleep since I've been on ADT, um, and it, it's not necessarily the hot flashes either, or the hot flushes. Really, um, I will give uh, Ken props. Uh, I started the ginseng after our last meeting for the 60 group, and that was uh, it, it helped. It actually did help. The ginseng did help. So uh, uh, kudos to Ken on that. Thank you. Um, and so that's where we're at. Um, we have a plan for checking it monthly for the first six months. And if it remains zero, watching the T rise. Um, 
She says, because of my age, I'm only 51. She, she suspects that my IT will rise, probably recover pretty quickly, um, considering my age. Um, so that's where I'm at. And uh, she, she, she talked to me about, okay, well, what's gonna happen if your PSA rises? I says, we go back on. And it's, we, we know where we're at. And she said also, um, we discussed the possibility of going ahead and letting the PSA rise to 0.2 or 0.3. And that might be a point where they could do uh, more sensitive scans. So um, what is your, what was the last testosterone reading that, that, that you had? I had a testosterone reading just before um, I started chemo and it was 350 or there about 330. That that was just before you started the LHRH. Yeah, well, it was r around that time, right? Right. It was it was before I started chemo and before I started ADT. Right. Okay. So that's important. So, but we don't know how your testosterone has been reduced during the period because Dr. Morgan's doesn't take regular, as we learned from John Ivory, she doesn't take regular testosterone unless you ask her for it. Yeah, and the same is true with my local oncologist. My local oncologist, he, he from the beginning, he's always been recommending a very aggressive approach on the hormone treatment. And he's recommended Zytiga, or he's mentioned Zytiga a couple times. And, um, but, at the, but at each time, I, I'm, I was already doing two treatments. I was already doing chemo and ADT, or I was doing surgery, recovering from surgery, or and then I just like I said I did 38 uh, 38 rounds of radiation back in August September right and so well, that's the other thing my urinary control has started coming back pretty well from from that so and that's good and and you did say 18 months right yep I'm taking your advice Rick I didn't try to pull out any earlier or uh, <laughs> Uh, withdrawal. Dr. Morgan's blessing didn't try uh, to treat me any earlier either. What's that? I said Dr. Morgan's didn't try to get you off and stop you any earlier either, right? Well, remember that no. she told me I'd never go off of it, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but but look, here's the difference, John. Um, Dell went into this. He wasn't a recurrent situation. It wasn't like his disease came back. So right. for those of you who, where your disease comes back, um, you're more likely to be in a situation where you have to keep on continuously, but for some people, maybe they can take intermittent. But right. I didn't want to make this about me, get back to Dell. No, it's okay, because it's, okay. A, real, it's a real important point. No, I appreciate that it. There's a difference between initial treatment and then stopping for a while and recurrent. And if I remember correctly, the original Hussein trial said that the men who did the men who had the most success with intermittent were the were the ones who did intermittent as a result of initial treatment rather than recurrent treatment and 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 you know it's always worth bearing that in mind but Dell, i i just want to say this is exciting and it's a great development and you know you're with one of our most favorite doctors so i just think you have to you know we're, we're all hoping and praying for you and and you got to keep telling us how you're doing. Uh, I will. I will. Yeah, we, we we decided to call it the trifecta: chemo, surgery, radiation. She says, "I I, I have never had to do. I've never done it in quite that way." Uh, is was her comment. Uh, she says either there's surgery followed up by by chemo or uh, chemo with radiation. She says the order I've done it was one she hasn't done before. Um, but she supported me in that and, and had a great surgeon uh, who, um, at uh, 
Northwestern was fantastic. Um, and I uh, wish that maybe I didn't have the, but there you go. Okay, well, we'll, we'll keep moving. Oh, I'm sorry. Does anybody want to ask any questions of, of Dell before we move on? Well, Dell, hopefully as your T-level comes back, you can get rid of some of the fatigue. Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, after our last talk, I uh, can so uh, was more deliberate and more intentional in my working out. And so I've gotten that back also. And um, just the idea of going off the ADT has actually given me a big boost. It's It, it really has lifted my mood um tremendously and so getting up at 6 a.m to get my workout in before my day started uh is is been a boost too so my good all good news right and and that reminds me of one thing that we should have stressed with bob McHugh for everybody and for everybody is this the exercise element is huge the exercise element is so important as a way of controlling a lot of the side effects of um of adt and if you're not on adt there's a belief that um the exercise even controls the cancer there have been studies done in that too so um everybody keep exercising um we know that everyone knows that that's one of our mantras like be your own best advocate um that, peter we'll have to get that on the back of the shirt be your own best advocate on the front and keep exercising on the back. Huh? <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to, we'll keep moving along to Herb. Just give us a quick update on your treatment plans, please. Uh, yeah, I finally, I mean, as you may remember, I wanted to get my prostate irradiated at the at sort of the urging of all of you. And finally, my primary medical oncologist agreed that it was the time to do it. So it took me a while to sort of figure out where and how. I was originally deciding between a clinical trial in New York City using the ViewRay machine or a standard approach down here using the CyberKnife at, at Georgetown. And to be honest, I would have picked the view ray except for COVID. And that really having this resurgence both here and in New York City sort of made the decision for me that we're going to go through with um, with the procedure down here. And I have the, in, in another two weeks, they put in the fiduciary marks for the view. And then a couple of weeks after that, I hope we'll start the radiation treatments. So it will be five treatments every other day, and hopefully this will make a difference. Because and then tomorrow I have a I'll have a PSA test, so I'll know what's going on. Haven't had one for a while, and tomorrow is my appointment with my medical oncologist, so we'll figure out where we are tomorrow. So next week we'll know more. So what was when was your last PSA test? Last PSA was three months ago. They decided that everything was stable, and so they would just extend it instead of six weeks to 12. Okay. And what, because I've got a PSA of 2.1 in July. Right. Is that's that what it was. Okay. Okay. You know, again, it doesn't make me happy. I think the PSA should be zero. But this is what it is. And, you know, maybe, you know, again, I, as it, I kind of think, well, where is the tumor burden? If the tumor burden is really in the prostate, then really getting rid of the prostate should bring that PSA down significantly. So sometime in February, I guess, we'll know better. Okay. Any okay. comments? I mean, I, the one thing I did, you know, I was, uh, does anybody have any comments about their experience with SBRT that I should worry about? How about Dennis McGuire, who has done SBRT to the gland? Mr. McGuire. Yeah. yeah um, I I don't I don't know. I mean, I had pretty good 
pretty good um, success with it. Uh, you know, I would say just follow the procedures they give you. You know, there's a lot of stuff you have to do in preparation for it with, you know, cleaning yourself out and making sure you've got the right amount of fluids in you. Yeah, I'm here. Did I change yeah, what? I, great. Thank, I, you know, uh, the other thing is you've got to go on a different diet. At least I have to go on a soft diet. Uh, I didn't change my diet. No, so I've heard some people. I've heard some people say you want to go on a low fiber. Right. Diet. That's exactly right. I have. They want yeah. me to go on a low fiber diet, and I'm. I'm exactly a hundred percent opposite. I'm on a high fiber diet. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, I thanks to you all guys for pushing me in this direction. Um, yeah, but to change your diet during radiation is pretty typical. I mean, you, you eat all the foods you shouldn't be eating, the white foods, not the sugar, but you do eat the white foods, the white pasta, because it does make a difference during radiation. Right. And it's absolutely right. There's a risk of... To the high fiber diet after. With, with high fiber, there's a risk that... Um, things move around and the radiation doesn't hit you in the proper place. Right. right. So, I mean, I'll live with it. I mean, I do like pasta. So what can I say? There you go. Okay. <laughs> Rich. Go ahead. Old green pasta. Sure. Can, uh, I, can I say something? Of course. Sure. Yeah, I, I had SBRT in Mount Sinai, five treatments, um, and I found it was very easy to tolerate. I was in and out of there in an hour every day. That included changing into a gown and drinking four cups of cold water before to get my bladder full. Um, I resisted having to do the fleet enemas before each treatment. The um, radiation oncologist said, okay, if you don't want to do them, you don't have to do them. This is at Mount Sinai, so it's not some neighborhood, you know, pop stand. And sure. uh, and I also did not have to make any dietary changes. So different strokes for different docs. Yeah. Okay. Um, I heard the dulcet tones very quickly of Tony the Boss, um, who was on as caller number two. Um, we didn't check in with him because I thought it was David Muslin who come back and come back a third time, but it wasn't. It was Tony DeBoss, and um, <laughs> so he, and I, I told him last week, Tony, you got to get here early if you want time because it makes it very difficult. So he may be back. He was also making noise, so I muted him. Yes, because he was ir he's irrepressible. Um, <laughs> All right, and and I, I'm having a little discussion here with um, somebody about the importance of exercise. Um, we're late in the day today. Yeah. If somebody reminds yeah. me, we will talk about exercise in the next call because I've, if I ask everybody to talk about exercise, we'll use up the last 15 minutes very quick, very easily, because there are so many people who know how much benefit they've had from starting an exercise regime. It, it is huge. Um, and, 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 and maybe um, the person that asked me should say, when I say, do you need it time next time? Yes, please, could you talk about exercise? And we will. So, um, because there's a lot of good stuff and it has made a difference. It's made an in, a life-changing difference for many of the people on this call. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep running down here, and the next person is Les. Les, what's up? Okay, uh, I had uh, the last uh, treatment I had uh, where they had radiated the spot on my spine, did not do too much. Uh, the PSA kept going up, I uh, had just come back from Mayo. They had done another uh, PET scan and also checked the PSA. The 
PSA has gone up to 3.9, which was right on where I had really expected with a doubling time of every six weeks. And they had found uh, several spots to different places. Uh, I was assuming that they were going to go on either uh, chemotherapy or second line antiandrogen. All he did was uh, put me back on Eligard uh, for the time being. He was, I, I kind of questioned that and he said, well, we'll do that for a little while. Uh, check it the next time if the PSA goes down notably. Uh, we'll just continue if it doesn't go down much or not at all uh, or up, uh, then he'll put me on a second line anti agent um, So, Les, um, did you say they scanned you again this time and they could see spots in places? That's correct. And where did they see uh, the spots? I was afraid you were going to ask that. It was here and there. Uh, and most of the words that they used, I couldn't understand. I read the uh, report and uh, I couldn't uh, understand what all those places were, but it was scattered anyway. There was uh, you know, different places. Um, were they, was it bone or was it lymph nodes? Uh, primarily bone. Okay. Um, so he's putting you back on Eligard for a short time um, to see the response, and then and then you're going to go from there. Um, who wants to talk to Les? I'm sure some of you do. I do. Please go ahead, Les. I, I think it's to me very surprising that with bone mats that he's only putting you on Eligard, you might want to push back on that and ask him why doesn't he use one of the second line antiandrogens, whether it's Cytiga or uh, one of the lutamides, because uh, I think Eligard is probably inadequate for your situation, Les. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. In fact, I had asked him about uh, Zytiga, and he that was the one that he said we would probably go to uh, if the PSA does not come down. I normally check uh, PSA and testosterone every six weeks. I have that on a running uh, prescription from the local doctor. I go up and just whenever I feel like it, go up and get my and testosterone check. So when I check it the next six weeks, uh, if I will notify Dr. Kwan, and if it is not doing what he wants it to do, then we'll go on Zygiga. Uh, uh, Les, I know. I was, little, I was very surprised. I, that really shocked me that he didn't go on something right away. Uh, with several uh, spots, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's something. standard of care now to add in a second line antiandrogen right. with bone mitts. Yeah, I, I would second what Len said. I think all the cancer, all the guidelines now really would say in your situation that a second line antiandrogen is a is appropriate, and you may really want to bring that up with him. Well, yes, we we did discuss that, and he has a, a different approach. His philosophy was, he said that he has seen a lot of guys come in there from elsewhere that have been on one of the uh, second line uh, antigens, uh, and he said that they're uh, not beyond hope, but he said that they're really difficult once they get. Uh, castorate resistant, he has, it says it's a, a difficult time getting him back. He would rather wait as long as he can before going on a, a, a more aggressive approach. 
I, I think we should share with the rest of the group who don't know that the that Lynn's treating doctor is uh, Eugene Kwan at, at, at Mayo. Um, <clears throat> the um, I think what I would encourage, I know what I would do, and I, I encourage you to do the same, is I, I would seek out a second opinion at this point. Well, it was interesting, you know, that, you know, uh, I guess Brian isn't on here this time. Brian, hi, hi easy, whatever. Yeah. He's also sees uh, Dr. Kwan and he was up there just like the week before I was. And uh, Dr. Kwan has had him on all this other stuff. And I inquired about that and he said, well, there's different situation. You know, we couldn't. And I, I comment, I know you can't discuss uh, another patient's circumstance, but we kind of made it a generic one. And he said, there's different circumstance. And uh, I have been discussing it with Brian, some of the things that he's gone through. And he's gone through uh, uh, Zytiga and he's been on chemo and, and he and I have had I think fairly similar situations. But, uh, well, the biggest, the, 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 you know, I I would encourage you. I, I'd seek a second opinion from Chuck Ryan at um, at um, University of uh, Minnesota, at Masonic, at the University of Minnesota, and and I'd be happy to to write to Chuck and 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 tell him to look out for you if, if you want to do that. Um, but that's that's what I would do at this point. Um, if you want to pursue that, just let me know. If you want to pursue it with or without me, um, he is um, uh, he is um, very accessible. He's very smart. Um, well, I would like to have a different opinion. One of the things that I wanted to find out here, uh, if anyone else had any ideas on why the difference, you know, I'm comparing, you know, uh, this with Brian, and I thought we had very similar circumstances. His was a little bit more aggressive, it was a lower Gleason score, but his was a little bit more aggressive, with more spots. but. Uh, to me, there's a significant difference in his uh, approach uh, for the two of us. So I, I didn't quite understand it. Well, you know, like he says, everybody's different, um, and and. Um, I don't know what to say, but I do think that a second opinion is in order. And then you decide what you do with the second yeah. opinion. Yeah, I I don't disagree with the second opinion because that, it really shocked me when he didn't go on uh, either a, a okay. hormone or uh, Well, look, I think second, I think second opinion for you where you're located is a toss up between Chuck Ryan or going to Northwestern <laughs> Um, I mean, or, or um, University of Chicago. Um, what's his name down there? I, uh, I was at Walter. Um, help me, somebody. Stadler. Stadler, thank you, Walter Stadler. But I, I would say one of those three: Chuck Ryan, Walter Stadler, or Alicia Morgan's. And just get a second opinion. Get all, get your records together, get it over, and, and see what they say. And then decide where you want to, you know, where if you want to stay or you want to move. Oh. Hey, Les. Dr. Yep. Morgan, it's been, it's been fantastic. And and uh, we are seeing people in person um, there, and they're doing a really good job of spacing people out. Um, I felt very comfortable, and I was just there last Thursday. Um, I mean, last Monday. Um, so. It's, I think it's fantastic. So, just my two cents. 
Okay, well, we, we, we've got to keep moving because the, um, the, uh, the natives are restless that we're not going to get to everybody. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we try to, to give everybody, I mean, Les was reluctant to talk, he's always reluctant to talk, and I know that Les has more in his mind, and he's always willing to listen to others, and I think it's important to give him the time. And as far as the new guys are concerned, everybody's been a new guy here once and everybody's had a fair amount of time. And this is just how it is. We'll just keep going. Um, and for those of you who are at the back end, um, you, you know, I'll stay as long as it takes to get around everybody. Um, so um, we've got three people left. We've got Carl, we've got David, Muslin, um, and we've got Al Latimer. So, um, Carl, why, why don't you um, why why don't you take the floor? Um, okay, I just want to talk about PSMA scans, and specifically for me, I've applied to Sloan Kettering for their uh, diagnostic trial. It's in process. I hope to hear within the next uh, few days whether I've been accepted or not. Um, if not accepted, I just don't know what exactly my next step is going to be other than, I guess, defaulting to another Axmum uh, PET scan. I've been in contact with a gentleman. I've been corresponding. Uh, a, a gentleman is 46 years old. He's in Canada, and he's been trying for the past uh, month or two to get a PSMA scan and related treatment. He's been looking all over the globe. Um, he's looked at Australia, he's looked at Germany, um, and uh, he was trying to get into India, but uh, he just had to cancel his trip as of this morning because of the problem with COVID and they just don't want anybody from the States to uh, get into the country. So, um, I, I hope again for me that this uh, PSMA scan will uh, occur and that it will help determine my next course of action because my oncologist right now, because my, my disease is progressing at this point and my oncologist is betting on the scan to determine what type of treatments would be most effective uh, for me going forward. Okay, so let, let's just let's just cut in at this point. Have you been in touch with UCLA? Not recently, but I have seen some postings about UCSF specifically okay. that they're so now that they've stick, gotten up. Let's just stick with UC with UCLA. We know that, and I don't know how this has changed since the approval last week, but we know that the PSMA was available as recently as a couple of weeks ago for $3,000 at UCLA. Now it may now be free, but it was available because we had a guy on the call who did it. The, the gentleman from Taiwan, um, I forget his name right now. So, you know, it, when I hear stories like, we don't know, we couldn't find it anywhere. I, I have to question them because I know they're available. Now I don't well, know. I'm, I'm sorry, you're... Rick. You're not. You're not correct, Rick. Because now that the at least UCSF and and by default UCLA, because of the approval at those locations, they have been getting inundated with requests, and there's now a long wait list at those locations. Okay, it's but there a, wasn't it's a totally new ball game the, now. But there wasn't a long wait list at those locations four weeks ago. Well, it was just approved, wasn't it? No, but you could have gotten it under trial. And, that, and that's what the guy from Taiwan did. And if this guy's been looking forever and a day, why didn't he call? Why didn't he call UCLA or UCSF when it was available at three grand a pop? Now I'm not saying three grand is a small amount of money. What I am saying is, if he can fly to Australia, he can go to UCLA, and he could have done it. I just said to you, I don't know now how the how the the um, it has changed since the approval last Monday, but before last Monday, it was available. 
So, you know, I, I, I can't listen to, we, we know, Peter, where, where is it available right now to the best of your knowledge? Uh, well, Carl is at, uh, at Sloan Kettering, UCSF and UCLA. According to Carl, they, they just wiped out all the other trials around the country. They were all on, they were on at, uh, you know, down in uh, Georgia, they were on in Indiana, they were all over the place. Uh, I'm out in Long Island at Stony Brook and so forth, but Carl said they've just taken them all off the map just uh, this week. And the only one that, Carl? Uh, you know, I, I did send something in the chat to you, Peter, that uh, when I did the search, I did strictly for a prostate cancer. When I put in metastatic, then it came up with a list of about 15 locations, but within 300 miles of New Jersey, there is only one, and there is MSK, and that's the one that I've applied for. Okay, well, look, Carl, here's the thing. I doubt that all the trials, if anything, the trials are more aggressive at this point, because everybody who's got a competing agent to PSMA 11, the PSMA R2, the PSMA 617, the, 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 the Axiomin, the Blue Earth, call up the Blue Earth people and find out where they're doing it. The problem is it may not be available in your backyard and you may have to pay for it. But let's, I want to get stuff straight on, the, on this call. I don't want men going off of this call saying PSMA is not available. It is available, we just can't tell you where there are a lot of trials going on still. And, and uh, Peter said, you, you mentioned UCLA, UCSF, that we know about. It was, it was available a few weeks ago in Georgia. The, uh, the Axiomin one was available in Georgia. All these guys are under more pressure now. All the commercial producers of the PSMA agents are under more pressure to get it to market. Right. That, while Cornell is not is within 300 miles of you, Stony Brook is within 300 miles of you. So there's there should be a number of places. Yes. Well, I, I uh, you know, a, a couple of meetings ago, I did talk about Wild Cornell and and Tata Tagawa, and I did meet with him specifically, and that was a couple of weeks ago, and he told me that there was no availability. Yeah, some of, these, some of these trials are very small. Some of them just take 20 people. They're just, you know, running a specific, uh, they've got a specific goal in mind. It's not open to okay. everyone. The uh, so Sloan Kettering is a big one. Sloan Kettering covers everybody. All of these trials that have small numbers are going to quickly expand them to big numbers because they want to get into the market. What's interesting with the UCLA, UCSF approval is it isn't really a commercial approval. I, it, I don't think it was ever designed as a commercial approval. I mean, the, that PSMA 11 has been available in other countries, and I think it was more, I believe it was more a proof of concept type of approval. And other people are gonna manufacture the PSMA 11 now that it's approved and make it available to the marketplace. Right, so Rick, can I put in that both of them made it made made it open source. Go ahead. Uh, uh, so look, I mean, I had a, a, an interesting interaction with our chief of pet medicine here at NIH because I emailed him, and he happens to be a friend in my temple. And I said, Peter, you know, when can we do this here? And basically, he explained to me that, and right now at NIH we have what's called an IND, an Investigational New Drug Application and we can use it only for clinical investigation. We cannot use that IND for patient, for, ev for everybody if they're not part of a clinical trial. And the approval to UCSA and U U UCLA and UCSF was to allow them to do that. You do not need to be in a clinical trial now for them to do it. But for anybody else to do PSMA PET outside of a clinical trial, according to my friend Peter Hershkovich, they have to apply for their own called ANDA at the FDA. And I sent this to you, Rick, right? And he estimated that's gonna take two years for the FDA to approve them, for it to really get to be commercially usable. 
Yeah, but you see what I think, I, I hear you, but what I think is that there are other manufacturers of this agent out there. Yeah, but no. they all have to get it. And they all have. If there's other manufacturers and it's not identical to the pat to the yeah, to the FDA approval, the they've got to get their own approvals. Right, but, but I mean, just be whoever is ready. They're going to push it quicker to get the trial results quicker, and at that point, put it into the FDA. I mean, there's pressure on everybody to to to, to, sure. to get to market now. Yes, there are 30 to 40 places doing trials. Um, Hopkins, Emory, uh, down in Texas, uh, there's several in Dallas, and I mean, all over the place. There's quite a few things going on, not only Gallium 68, but PYL studies and so forth. Right. So there are things going on. Uh, Rick, Rick, this is Al. Uh, my question is related to the PSA PET as well. Um, I'm currently enrolled in the uh, trial at Emory. I'm supposed to have the tests next week. I got a call from them Friday saying that they're closing their trial and that they were going to sneak me in anyway if I still wanted to do it. Um, but they won't release the films. They will tell me the results, but that's it. So I'm not sure I want to do it. Does anybody have any comment on that? Well, I mean, that's no, the point yeah. of the trial is that what, it what, isn't for you. The, hold on a second. Just hold on a second, Herb. I'll come back to you. What is the what is the age of the trial agent that the what are they trialing? PSMA what? It's the it's the Blue Earth agent. It's the Blue, Blue Earth. Is it Blue Earth? Okay. Um and uh, I forget which, does anybody know which one that's called? Is that the R2? I think that might be the R2. Um, I have it written down somewhere. I don't remember the specific. Okay. The, uh, specific um, agent, but it's, it's the one that's being developed by Blue Earth. They've, they've cut, they've, they've stopped doing it. They've, they've cut off their trial. Did they indicate um, why? Pardon? Did they indicate why? Did anybody indicate why? They didn't tell me why. They just said they're stopping it. I assume it had something to do with the FDA approval. I mean, it happened three or four days after that approval came out. Well, but, uh, I think there's another reason, and I've, we've seen this happen before, because they 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 they've got enough data, and they and they're now going to submit to the FDA, and that's what I would guess is happening. Um. Well, very well could be, but and this um. Is, this is, We've, we've seen this with other drugs where a competing drug has gotten done and then they call off a trial because they say, this is it, we've got the data, we're going with, we've seen it with the eye drugs, with the apalutamide and the enzalutamide. We've got, we've got what we need, we're stopping the trial, we're, go, we're going to the FDA with it sooner rather than later. And, and maybe Carl is right, maybe that's happening in certain locations, but I, I am well convinced that- This one was Emory. Emily is Emily is using F18 or gallium 68. They are uh, putting you in one or the other. Maybe because gallium was approved, they're stopping the trial. Yeah, but what's the, that, what's important is the PSMA agent, Peter. What's the PSMA agent they're using? PSMA one. Hold on a second. Uh, I don't have it in front of me. I I can't tell you specifically. Yeah, no, I'm asking Peter. Peter has it there. But, I'm looking. but Peter, whilst Peter's looking, we need to move on. But I, I, I just have to say, Carl, you know, I, I hear you. I, I know how important it is. Um, I just think that, you know, keep the faith, keep looking, keep checking every day. Get your, get your name on the, on the waiting list for UCLA and UCSF. At least you're on the waiting list. Um, and you know, how about calling? How about calling Pam Munster? Have you called Pam Munster? Uh, I have not. So why don't you call Pam Munster? See if she can pull any strings for you. She may be able to pull some strings with Tom Hope and get you in, and and justify why you're a more urgent case. 
it's PSMA 11 or um, F18. PSMA 11. Okay, so PSMA 11 is the one that was approved. So that's right. possibly why, but 11 is not the axiom. 11 is not the axiom drug, is not the uh, blue earth drug. Right. So I, 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 I don't know. Um, but Carl, I mean, to me, use the influence that you have already. And you have a relationship with, 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 with Pam Munster, and she knows that you're a BRCA patient, and tell her that you, you, you can't get in anywhere and see if she can arrange for you. But then you'd have to fly to San Francisco. Yeah, and San Francisco right now is under a lockdown. Okay, there's always a if or a but or the other. You know, you have to decide. I mean, if, if, if it's under a lockdown, you fly into the airport, you take the cab to UCSF, and then when you're done, you take the cab back. We, we, the, the, the glass has to be half full, not half empty. And I know it's hard. I understand it's hard. In, 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 I, I can empathize, but there's only so many solutions we can come up with. If MSKCC doesn't have it, and you, you couldn't get it at while, and you're having trouble finding it anywhere, but we know it's approved at UCSF, we got to pull the strings to get you in at UCSF. Otherwise, you, you, you're restricted to a 300-mile radius, and we don't have anybody within a 300-mile radius. So you're not going to get the scan. Get an Axiomin scan. Stony Brook is doing a, uh, an F-18 PYL study. That's on Long Island. And what agent are they using? It's the agent that's important, Peter. It's not the radionuclide. Um, and it just says the same one I did, the 18F DCF PYL ligand. Yeah, but look, the, the, the way it works, there's, there's, there's a molecule, and the molecule goes to PSM, goes to the prostate cell, it's attracted to the PSMA on one side, and it pulls a radionuclide with it on the other. It's this agent that the FDA has to approve. And the one they approved was called 11. Right, but this is a PYL scan. This is in the gallium one. So this has- It doesn't matter. It doesn't, show, it doesn't say any, any other agent. It just says what it is. All of them are testing the agent. They're not testing the PYL. They're testing the agent. 18 flocklevine. Yes, they're, t they're not testing that. Okay. Okay, what they're testing is the agent in the middle. Am I, am I right, Herb? Are you still with us? I think he left. No, he's right at the bottom. No, he's here. <laughs> yeah. You're Maybe right. you could explain it better than me. Well, I mean, basically, there, there are two different... We, I mean, the way this thing works is that there's one half of the molecule is targeted to PSMA, and the other half of the molecule through a bridge is the is the radio emitter, and the rate and the two PET emitters that have been in use are 18 fluorine, fluorine 18 and 68 gallium, and then there are other linkers, the R2 linker versus the 111 linker, and so yes, there are com they are competing products. Right now, only one of them is FDA approved. But what's what I just, you know, and it's still confusing to me because the the slump Memorial and Emory are using the same reagent from the same company, hmm. which is a PSMA11 kit, gallium 68 PSMA11 kit from a commercial from a company. And the company website says they are in phase three trials. So that would surprise me that Emory would shut it down because unless they have enough data to submit. That's what I think. They have enough data to, to submit. 
And so and they, it they, may be trying to get it in. Given a, one, and it may also be that having the one reagent approved, they figure they can just go in with whatever they have now because it's a copycat drug. Right. They don't have to go in with this complete evidence. Exactly. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, Al Alfred, Alfred, you should send this to everybody, not just to me. Okay, um, well, I, okay, I can do that. Yeah, I mean, so the, the agent that Alfred is talking about is the RH PSMA. Mm -hmm. Which is the one at Emory, which I think is a it, it, it it's diff, which is different to the PSMA eleven. It may use a no. Emory is at least I I'll put something in the chat window here, uh, for everybody, which is a link to the website for the company that's PSMA eleven. I I pulled that out of the consent form. They're asking me to sign. Right, but I think that that is a different agent. To the one that was approved by the FDA. Uh, I agree. And that yeah. might well be the agent that Blue Earth. I don't know the the actual name of the Blue Earth agent. Um, well, it's my understanding Blue Earth is the uh, is the company behind this. Okay, so, so Alfred, that... it's Ken Anderson, I just have one question. You know, you made a comment that they weren't going to give you the film. But are they going to give you like the data, the analysis of the film? Is someone going to do a read and provide you with a report? They are. They are going to consult with me. They are not going to give me a report. They are not going to give me the films, according to them. Yeah, then no I don't written, know. What you, no I don't report. know what use. I don't know what use it is. Like Herb said, they're doing it for themselves, and if you can't get access to the data and the information, I don't know what good it does for you. Well, that's uh, I, I asked I asked my doctor, Dr. Turner, about it, and he said he said you probably should pass, especially considering that you have to be there for live in a hotel there for four days to get it done while COVID is mm -hmm. raging. Um, not sure that it's of any value to enough value to me to do that. On the other hand, other hand, at least I'll know something um, because getting the test somewhere else is even more risky. At least I don't have to fly to Atlanta from where I am. Um, well, don't know. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw it out there. That was my question. Well, and it's very helpful information. And, and, you know, Peter's still working on the spreadsheet. And so this has changed things. And we'll dig out as much information as we can. Um, but I, I do think, as I said to you at the beginning, the approval has changed has changed things. I mean, what was available four weeks ago may not be available today. And yes, there is a, I can understand why there's a wait list. So now we've got to start pulling strings. I mean, I, I, I may have some strings I can pull at UCSF, but I don't know at this point in time. But, 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 um, but if you've got a doctor at UCSF that you're using, that's a great person to be talking to. And, and or, or at UCLA, that's a great person to be talking to right now. Um, let's let's just finish up with David Muslin. Um, David, you had something on your mind. Yeah, thanks, guys. I know it's really so. We'll make this quick. Um, my PSA continues to go down. It was it was 0 0.06 on 10:23. As of 11:24, it was 0 0.04. My T level hangs in there at consistently about 10 at every test. I had a CT chest scan and a bone imaging whole body scan. The bone hole imaging body scan came out clean. The the, however, the uh, CT chest scan um, says there's a, 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 there is new pleural thickening with subpleural nodularity of the uh, medial right side lobe. What Hussein says is Hussein says she doesn't think it's prostate cancer. She actually doesn't think it's anything. But we want to retake the scan in three months uh, and see if there's any change and see what that looks like. 
So it was a little bit frustrating because last week she told me, I'm, you're cleaning both scans. She calls me back today to tell me this news about, she spoke to the pulmonologist and rather than waiting six months for another scan, let's do it in three months. So other than that, it's, um, I'm clean. I'm feeling good. Everything is good. I'm just a little bit worried about this pleural thickening. Um, but it, she pretty confident that it's not prostate cancer, but it could be something else. And she's just being, um, we're being ultra cautious, she says. And I'm getting blood, and I'm doing blood work every, uh, every month. Um, again, anybody have any experience with um, chest uh, observations in the chest? Uh, I mean, oftentimes I know we, we, we see lesions in the lung and we see lymph node activity in the lung. Is, it, is anybody on who's still on the call uh, ever had any observations? in their lungs? Um, you know, again, this is where it comes down to having trust in your doc, Dave, David. And if she thinks that you need to do it in three months, you should do it in three months. But it doesn't sound, I mean, thickening is not something I've heard of. I've never heard of plural, um, Thickening in the Thickening. chest. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Gell, Professor Geller. Plural thickening in the chest and prostate cancer. I really don't have any knowledge of this at all, but I okay. I tend to think that you know, oh, you what she said was she doesn't think it's related to the cancer, and you know it sounds like maybe that's possible. Right. Yeah. And, and she, she, she brought in a pulmonologist from Northwestern and, and they just had a discussion. She said, you know what, just get it done in three months instead of six months, let's look at it. Yeah. She's relaxed, I don't think it'll be anything, but let's just, because we're watching you very closely, let's just check it out. That's, other than that, I think my, you know, I'm in a pretty good place. Um, yeah. PSA keeps coming down, the T level is good. Um, I'm good on the, uh, the Abiraterone, so, I'm rolling. Yeah. I mean, I'm just hoping tomorrow with my test that it's going down. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, Rick, you, you said something about scanitis. Was it scanitis? Is that how you said it? Mm -hmm. Scanxiety. Scanxiety, yeah, scanxiety. That's, that's our lives, right? Scanxiety. Well, so yeah, that's the skinny. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, it's a problem for not just for prostate cancer patients, it's a problem for all cancer patients. Yep, yep. And, a great uh, day today and feel well and it's all, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy for a wonderful day. And, and, and you know what, David, you are in such a better place than you were on the enzalutamide. No question. No question, it's all good. And and I had one somebody talked about ginseng help their high flash yes. ginseng help the hot flashes. So it's American ginseng that you 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 want to look for, which comes out of Wisconsin. And yeah. um, there has been studies. There have been clinical trials with Amer on with using American ginseng, and um, it, it, so it seems to help men with a bunch of different um side effects on hormone therapy it seems to help with energy i think you i think you take it as a tea um i think that's well I mean, you may be able to get it in capsules too but you can look it up american jim saying um you know i think about um rob beniscus god rest his soul who the room is named after and um he found it very very helpful uh, in terms of mitigating his side effects. And so last let, yeah, I'm sorry, Rick. Yeah, but it last has, week last week we talked about a uh a sage sage, sage. tea. Is that the same? Is, is this the same? No. 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 Different. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Any anybody have any experience with American? Anyone else have any experience with American gin, ginseng, the Wisconsin ginseng? I just looked it up on Amazon. It's readily available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I, you know, the way I look at it, it's you know, it's chicken soup. It, it, it may help and it can't hurt. Um, and, but I, but again, if you if you're using it, please tell your medical oncologists. Just let them know that you're taking American ginseng. Important to let them know you. with all these supplements to keep them in the picture. Dennis okay. McGuire is the man. He's in Wisconsin. <laughs> Maybe he's growing something. Are you growing any of that in your backyard, Dennis? I, I have actually seen the farms. They're massive. They're in the middle of Wisconsin. And what it's do you know? Like, it's almost like the wine country. <laughs> wow. 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 Um, and it's the root, isn't it? They take the root and they they make a, a powder or something out of the root. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, it's a look alike. Oh. Oh. That's it, huh? We can hear you now, Lou. How we can hear you. Know? All of a sudden, we can hear you. Oh, really? Yeah, I my my wife getting this for me, so I tried. And now it works. <laughs> this is a ginseng uh, from Wisconsin. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you know, we have a bunch of those, and uh, we. We bought this not because uh, any cancer or whatever. You know, normally uh, uh, some of my family members think this is good for many things. You know, if you are weak, if you need some uh, 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 things uh, for your health, you know, you 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 cut it in small piece and uh, uh, just just like make a tea, and you drink every day. Even you without any real disease, that will help. And so, uh, because you are talking about ginseng, I, I just getting to <laughs> show you is from Wisconsin. That is the main place. Uh, a real good. Some other places make this too, but uh, you know, and uh, um, uh, Wisconsin is the, the 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 place to make real good. Uh, this type of ginseng. Well, thank you. And okay. I'm so sorry we couldn't hear you before, but come back on Tuesday and we'll okay. talk more about your situation. Please come back. Okay, thank you. Um, and that was, and that was the ultimate testimonial. There you go. All those guys who left early, those 10 guys who left early, never got to hear the best part of the call. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, Mr. Lou, please, uh, do we have your email address? Because if not, put your email address in the chat. I, I think I got a I got a notification uh, from my email. I think on okay, my email. Yeah, yeah, that is where I get the information. Okay, then then you're on our list already. Fantastic. Okay, yeah. Okay, if you got it. All right, guys. Look, I'm sorry. Um, again, you know, it's a problem. We when you, we've got 30 guys and, and, and you know, it, it usually take the first hour to talk to new guys, talk about new things and what have you. Um, and now I've got people who are upset because we're not getting around everybody. Um, we don't have a solution. Um, there's, there's a couple of things that have gone through my mind and I've got to talk, to it, talk with the guys. Um, but we can't go to more than one group a week. What we may be able to do is separate, I'm reluctant to do it, but even separate this group into different categories. But I really am reluctant to do that because everybody has a bit of knowledge for, for everybody else. And, and I, I, I don't know where to go when we've got you know, 32 guys on the call as we, or 32 people, excuse me, Regina, as we, as we did today. Um, 
but you just have to be patient and trust that I'll try, we'll try and get around to everybody. I, you know, some people get a lot of time one week. They're just going to have to be patient the next week and, 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 and they don't have the time. So, you know, we, we, we do our very best. Okay, um, we'll be back with you next Tuesday. It is the, the date is the 15th. It is not, am I right? Is it the 15th? Yes. It's the yes. 15th. It is, it is the third Tuesday, not the fourth Tuesday. Um, but we will be with you. And um, there will be no meeting on the fourth Tuesday this week. We may possibly stick a meeting into the fifth week if we need to. We have some flexibility in that fifth week of the month, and maybe we can stick an extra meeting in, um, even on the fly, we can do that. And happy Hanukkah. Oh yes, happy Hanukkah to a happy, thank you, thank you for reminding me. Yes, to those who light up their candles, I've got to pull out the old menorah, Make sure it's in the window where somebody can see it. And happy Hanukkah to um, to everybody. Um, yeah, next Tuesday will be. I think I have. I think I think my, my father died on the fifth candle. I've got a feeling that might be next Tuesday. <laughs> right, your side. Funny how you. Good luck with your PSA, Herb. Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Good luck, Take Herb. care, guys. Talk to you next Bye. week. Good night, all. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Be, stay well and be well. Yes. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Have a good one. Bye bye.